Brian Maxey struggled tonight for the Sixers for sure, but so did Harden. And this is now two games in a row for James after he was absolutely spectacular in game one. What's he saying? What's Philly make of these last two struggles for him? Okay, so he's not saying much at all. His interview session was very short and not sweet, as you can imagine. The issue with Harden is he doesn't just plumb into this game. He comes into this whole series with baggage, baggage from what he's had in the past, baggage of the way he played in the playoffs last year. And you can focus on that if you want, and you wouldn't be wrong. But I'm just going to point out that a big factor going on right now is Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is a difference maker in this series. After game one, when Harden put up 45, he went to Joe Missoula and said, I want him. And they made some other structural differences. He has pressured James Harden coming up the floor from right behind me. He would inbound the ball, and he would pressure him all the way up, 80 feet. Maybe not 94, but 80 feet. He's done that two games in a row. It's totally thrown Harden off his game. He can't get into a comfort zone with pick and rolls. He can't do his crossovers. Jalen Brown has been the reason why James Harden is struggling, or at least a very big reason. And also, he's been really good offensively the last couple of games, playing more at sort of a point guard position, handling the ball. So if you're going to crack James Harden, that's fine. But you should also give credit to Jalen Brown. Perfectly said. I, I agree. It's not just that, that Harden isn't disappeared. There's a reason for it. We talked after game two where Boston won and Tatum was not good. And you suggested accurately he's like he's not going to play like that again. He didn't. What was different for Tatum in game three? Well, you could see right out of the gates, he understood this was going to be a crazy environment in here. It was. It was an incredibly touching and emotional uh, pregame ceremony for Embiid. Tatum wiped that out. He totally vaporized all of it with the way he started the game. And then he finished very strong. Two big baskets down the stretch to sort of drop the nail into this one. And he has really struggled against the Celtics this year. They've played six times coming into this game. For those six, he didn't crack 20. As you mentioned, in game two, he had seven points. It was a non-factor in what was the biggest game of the season to that point. So he obviously wanted to get back and, and get going in this one. And this was an MVP-level performance. He wasn't great, but he manufactured points when they needed it. And he ends up coming away tonight with the win on Embiid's big night. Speaking of the emotion, Brian, you know me. I'll cry about anything. His, seeing his family there, seeing his child there, seeing him moved, was remarkably touching. I have to imagine that took something out of Embiid. I just wonder, you're in the building. What was that like? So the face that he made is all of Philadelphia knows Joel Embiid's crying face because they remembered from Toronto. And that was somehow seen as a weakness. When he made his crying face again when his son was in his arms, this crowd went crazy. And you looked around, there's people wiping tears. There's yeah. grown men in here wiping tears. Uh, after seeing that because they have sons. They're here with their sons. It's a great moment. Um, and by the fourth quarter, they were booing the Sixers. So what you have here, <laughs> happy Cinco de Mile from Philadelphia. Yeah. Another chapter for the books. <laughs> hey, man, it's Philadelphia. They love their guys. But, hey, you know, when we, you got to let you hear it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.